do we fight and win this war? We will direct every resource at our command, every means of diplomacy, every tool of intelligence, every instrument of law enforcement, every financial influence, and every necessary weapon of war. Whether we bring our enemies to justice or bring justice to our enemies, justice will be done. Every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. I have a message for our military. Be ready. Basically this one is an expelling round. When we fire it, it dumps out grenades. About 88 grenades dump out. It drops down and some of it will bounce up and it'll get you about chest high. Why do they hate us? of mass destruction. Peaceful efforts to disarm the Iraqi regime have failed again and again. Iran aggressively pursues these weapons and exports terror. The United States and other nations did nothing to deserve or invite this threat. The Iraqi regime has plotted to develop anthrax and nerve gas. The United States of America has the sovereign authority to use force in assuring its own national security. Our war against terror is only beginning. That duty falls to me as Commander-in-Chief. And nuclear weapons, by the oath I have sworn, by the oath I will keep. Biological, this is not a question of authority. Chemical, it is a question of will. States like these, by the oath I have sworn, and their terrorist allies, by the oath I will keep, constitute an axis of evil. The United States and our allies are authorized to use force in ridding Iraq of weapons of mass destruction. Biological, weapons of mass destruction. Chemical, Saddam Hussein and his sons must leave Iraq within 48 hours. Thousands of dangerous killers schooled in the methods of murder. Their refusal to do so will result in military conflict. Access of evil at a time of our choosing. Spread throughout the world like ticking time bombs set to go off without warning. And all Iraqi military and civilian personnel should listen carefully to this warning. We will develop and deploy effective missile defenses to protect America. Do not destroy oil wells or nuclear weapons from threatening the United States. You should listen carefully. Access of evil to this warning. Do not destroy oil wells with weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction. Whatever it costs to defend our country, we will pay. The United Nations Security Council has not lived up to its responsibilities, so we will rise to ours. fight with the full force and might of the United States military, and we will prevail.
against terror is only beginning. I believe that the effort that has been directed to this point has been sufficiently intense that it is highly unlikely that there were large stockpiles of deployed, militarized, chemical and biological weapons there. Turns out uh, we were all wrong, probably in my judgment, and that is most disturbing. Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI a method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. An SAI program could limit global temperature increases, reducing some risks associated with higher temperatures and providing the world economy additional time to transition from fossil fuels. This process is also relatively inexpensive. The National Research Council estimates that a fully deployed SAI program would cost about $10 billion yearly. As promising as it may be, moving forward on SAI would also raise a number of challenges for our government and for the international community. On the technical side, greenhouse gas emission reductions would still have to accompany SAI to address other climate change effects, such as ocean acidification, because SAI alone would not remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. On the geopolitical side, the technology's potential to alter weather patterns and benefit certain regions of the world at the expense of other regions could trigger sharp opposition by some nations. Others might seize on SAI's benefits and back away from their commitment to carbon dioxide reductions. And as with other breakthrough technologies, global norms and standards are lacking to guide the deployment and implementation of SAI and other geoengineering initiatives. Now, I could go on and on and on and on about the things that fascinate me, but rather than talk about them, I thought I'd stop here and start the conversation with Judy, and then I can take some of your questions. I very much appreciate the invitation to come back here in the Council of Foreign Relations, and as I say to all the groups I speak to, it is a tremendous honor and privilege every day to be referred to as the Director of Central Intelligence Agency. I lead an organization full of patriotic men and women who take great risks and put themselves on the front lines in order to keep their fellow Americans safe and secure and to do what they can to keep this country's security secure. Thank you so much.